Did that make you feel better? Mm -hmm. Did you participate in that? Mm -hmm. Because you're not breathing. Um, she shows me she's holding your hand. Do you ever feel her yeah. presence? Yeah. Because she shows me holding your hand. She's never left you. No, she's, I know. I know. She says that. Is that good or bad? I was going to say, too fast. She <laughs> said, I'm in the light. Those are my words. She has made her transition fully. She's just there because she's, she's fine. It's she's she's worried she about me. About. Yeah. Because you're holding yourself back. Um, <laughs> Do you ever go to grieving classes or, because that's what she's suggesting. Like, you know, like maybe, you know, it doesn't have to be in a group this size, but maybe find out uh, wherever you live, wherever these grieving groups. Um, where do you, what town do you live in? Oakland Park. Okay, I don't know anybody. I just, there's a woman that was wonderful when I came to my event yesterday. She has her own group up in Palm Beach. But get together, that's what she's saying, your mom. She's like, tell her, suggest that she get together with other people that are going through the same thing. She's showing me any, a book. Are you reading a book on grieving and passing and... Because she's suggesting that, that reading some stories about how the, what, how are people, because everybody grieves different. Mm -hmm. So I can't tell you what to do, you know. Um, she's like suggesting maybe a counselor if you, you know. She's like, you know, anybody you could talk to that's not related to you. Because you're going to have some friends or family members that are going to be like, you get over this already, but don't listen to them, she's saying. Because nobody knows until you, you know, nobody lives in your shoes. Steps in, you know, what do they say? Is that how they say yeah. it? Mm -hmm. um, she's like, um, Thank you, thank you, thank you, because you were like this, how is she putting it, shining star, something with a star, she said. I don't know if she ever used that example, but she's like, you were my shining star. Yeah, she passed in the house with me. Okay, and she's like, you've always been there for her. Like, no matter what, you always did everything for her. Even when she was getting sicker and sicker, you did everything. And she's even saying, you know, wipe your honey and, you know, like things that a daughter should not have to do. And she's like, you insisted, like you never cared, you did whatever it took, you rolled up your sleeves and didn't, you know, you didn't care, you always did. And she'll never forget that. She's like, you know, my, my daughter shouldn't have to do that, mother's supposed to do that for her kid. And she said, um, who's, the, who's Italian around you? Is anybody Italian? Check his body hand. Okay, go 100%? Mm -hmm. On both sides. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't anybody distant or a friend that passed? Maybe that was Italian? Go back. Now, you didn't always live in Florida, did you? New York. Okay, I was going to say that. Okay, go back to New York. Because they tell this guy tells me he lived in New York, he was Italian. He lived in your neighborhood. And he passed. Did you live in, like, Brooklyn area? Where'd you live? I lived in, uh, we lived in Westchester, and then I lived in Queens. Queens, okay. I was going to say Queens. Because he's showing me that area. Okay, when you lived in Queens, there was an Italian guy. We're narrowing it down. He's like showing me. He's going like this. Narrowing it, narrowing it, narrowing it. What was that? He's in Bedsonhurst. No, that's Brooklyn. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm not good. I, I lived on Long Island. Can you tell? My Long Island. Long Island. <laughs> when my kids make fun of me, Ma, coffee? Really? <laughs> I said, I don't have an accent. <laughs> but your mom is always there with her, with you. Um, she said, you're not ready to go home yet. Meaning heaven. So she's like, tell her to stop thinking that way. It's not her time. And um, are you married? No. Okay. All right, so then I could say this. There is somebody coming along. I feel like there's somebody, when I see a person, let's say this is you, and I see a person circling close, that means they're, you're, you're not seeing them, but they're around you. And that's what she gives me with you. Okay? So that person's around you, but you're grieving so heavily, you, this person is like practically knocking into you and you don't see him. So talk to your mom later. She's setting it up. Okay. She's setting it up. You're going to be so happy you're going to be a new person. I want to see you in 12 months. You're going to be a whole new person. I'm telling you. I'm ready you're, for it. You are. You are ready. Do you see uh, anything on my spiritual side? Because I also want to... Well, that... Well, I was going to ask oh. you, but I know we wanted to talk about mom first, but you are very psychic. Um, you're another one like her. Though. I am. I'm also like, yeah. oh, I, I can't do it. Yes, I can. No, I can't. You can't. I did that for years. I My first reading professionally, when I was given money, I came up with every excuse. I think I'm feeling a fever. <laughs> I think I don't feel good today. I came up with every excuse you can imagine. I, I, don't, I mean, the list was this long. Finally, I just got mad at myself for being so fearful. I got to do it. It's like the first day on the job. Got to do it. Show up. That guy, I read for years. He was my first client. For years. So if I didn't have that as a basis, 
Same with you. You're ready. You've been psychic your whole life and embraced it. I'm just, I guess I'm afraid to share it with people because I don't want to give them the wrong information, you know? You know, one thing I learned in a class years ago, and I'll give Doreen Virtue credit again. Years ago when I took her week-long workshop, she said, when you give a reading, just keep on delivering. Keep on delivering, even if they do one of these to you. Mm -hmm. And I never forgot that because she's like, they may not remember. It's overwhelming when somebody gives you a reading. That's why I love when people come with friends and relatives. Because even it happened to me last night, this one woman, I was saying stuff to her, and she's kind of, uh, and her daughter said, yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> and keep on going, she said, keep on going, because they may not remember. I had a woman, I'll never forget, last year, my aunt called me on the way, my psychic medium aunt. There's going to be a woman there, and she's brought with her a deceased loved one, I forget her name, I'll call her Joan for the heck of it. Okay, I go into the class. My aunt wanted to give a message. Does anybody know a deceased loved one by the name of John? Okay. Next morning, I get on, check my email. This woman, you know, crack a dawn. Guess what? My grandmother came to me last night in my sleep, and guess what her name is? Da, 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 Joan. I forgot her. <laughs> she goes, because she was psychic, and her grandmother said, would you forget my name? It didn't even dawn on her until the next day. So, you can't be wrong. Now, anytime things are wrong, it's not necessarily wrong. Maybe it's the interpretation. Like, that's why when I was saying certain things to her, I don't understand legal jargon. That's why I said, does this make sense to you? Because I don't understand what any of that stuff means. Do you feel that I'm blocked? No, I feel that you're grieving. So if you want to call it a block. So is that what it is? You're just grieving. Okay. And once you start trusting it, take classes, practice on people. Are you kidding me? That's like my, my cousin Courtney. She's like, I'm blocked. She went to my class yesterday. No, you're not. You have to do it. You have to practice it. I gave her angel cards. I said, breathe. The more you do it, the better you get at it. So Sunday, she's taking my, my all-day workshop because if you can do a workshop for five hours, it definitely. Because doing it, it's like, okay, let's say I'm going to go take up tennis. Do you think if I pay one play once in a while, I'm going to get good at it? No. But let's say I practice an hour every day or even more, a couple hours a day. Do you think I'm going to get better at it? Same thing with intuition. So if you, you know, once you do that, then exchange cards with people like you guys should help out because you're still a little insecure too. So if you guys live close, hey, that's how I did. When I came back from uh, California from Doreen's workshop years ago, I got, I met a couple of people, believe it or not, all the way in California. 